And we're back. Thank you guys for joining me again for another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Today we are going to discuss object warp. Now there are two types of object warps. Essentially they do the same thing, uh, but they are they function under two different panels in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to show you the differences between those as well as another more manual way of doing a warp. Okay, so let's get started. Let's create a basic rectangular shape. Put it out on the board. Doesn't matter how big or small, just need a shape. That way we can see how the actual function of the warp works. So we're going to do our first is going to be the preset warp. So we're going to go to effect. We're going to go to warp. And then we're just going to select one of the warps that's actually on this list. So let's select the first one, which is arc. And you'll notice this is the shape that comes up and our warp options dialog box pops up as well. Now in this box, we can select any of the styles that we have listed and make sure your preview button is selected so that way you can view this while it's live. So we're gonna click arch, show, just go through them so you can see how they look. Now this is a wave, but it's contained within the box. So you can't really see what's going on in here, but if there was something inside, it would wave the actual object on the inside of the box. So let's go back up to arc and you can change the style from horizontal to vertical. And it's just gonna change whether or not it does it on the X axis versus the Y axis, okay? And then your bending justifies whether it's going to go right or left in terms of the strength of the bend, okay? And then in the distortion panel, it changes whether or not it's going to be more horizontal or less horizontal, more vertical or less vertical. So you can change these in these presets and you can click OK. Now what this does is it applies it as a filter. This keeps your original shape intact, which is why you only see the rectangular uh, box here, but not the one around the actual shape. Like you don't see one around the shape in terms of anchor points. If you go to your appearance menu, you'll look, you'll see it says warp arc. And if you were to click that, it's gonna bring your warp options back up. That's so you can manipulate this real time and you can change it again. Notice that the regular rectangular shape still remains the same, okay? Now, if you wanted to change it and make this a solidified object, which makes it easier to align and move around, once you've decided upon the shape, you can go to object and expand appearance. And now you'll notice that the bounding box is around the entire shape and you can now select the corner points here and then manipulate and adjust how you want. So that's with the preset version. Now, when it has not been expanded, if you were to select one of these points, it will adjust according to what the preset is for that specific shape or basic shape that's underneath, okay? So these are how you do it with the uh, preset under the effect and warp menu, okay? Now the option to do this, let's go back to our original rectangle. We can go to another option which is object and we go to envelop and distort or an envelope and distort, but you go to make with warp and when you do that, it brings up the same warp options. But the difference between this is now it's segmented. Remember before it kept your original shape and the underlying shape. It doesn't do that now. Now it actually alters the shape directly. You can then take the anchor points and you can adjust that shape independent one of one another instead of having to actually adjust the shape first. And now that we have these points, again, not having to adjust the shape first, we can do things immediately without expanding the appearance of the actual shape. So this is awesome. The only thing that you have to worry about with this is maybe you wanted to change a shape later on that was the underlying shape that you wanted to start with. You would have to create the whole thing over again. But the good news is if you were to do this from start and you know that there's a precise shape you're going to work with, once you get into that menu and you make the warp, you can still, you know, do this live before it solidifies anything. And you click OK, and then you can adjust 
with the shape that you're secure on that you want to adjust with. Okay, so it splits it up into its various points, almost like a mesh, but unlike the mesh, you can't change the items of these individual anchor points, only their location and positioning. Okay, now there is one other type that we're going to talk about, and this one is basically the complete manual way to do this, and that's to go to your object menu. You're going to go to envelop and distort, and then you're going to go to make with mesh. And envelop mesh allows you, or envelope mesh allows you to actually choose the number of rows and columns. And we're going to click preview, and you'll notice that these columns and rows come up depending upon how many you've selected in your options box. Now, similar to the way a pen tool works with bezier curves, the less anchor points, the more smooth your curves will be, the easier it is to manipulate. So if you know you want a specific type of curve or something you want to do with your object, the less anchor points you have, the easier it will be. But if you want something more complex, then you just add more anchor points. It's just going to become more detailed and a little bit more difficult for you to manipulate. But let's say we started with, I want to start with one and one. Or a matter of fact, I'll make it two and one like this and nope I'll make it two and two and we'll click OK and then I can go and I can select let's say this point I can lift it up I can take this point and I can bring it here and then I can adjust if I want how the other anchor points respond to that like if I wanted to make this more of a smooth curve I can point the handles at the center anchor point and or other handle to get me more of a bulge feel. Fairly simple, relatively easy, but if I were to put more uh, actual points on this, it would actually make me manipulating it much more difficult because then I'd have to have more responsibility taken ab about each anchor point that I'm trying to manipulate. So the next thing you can do is you can select your mesh tool in this which is the letter U on your keyboard you can actually add anchor points and you can manipulate these on this specific setup that allows you to then do more with it in terms of how you want the shape to look All right. but again this is like the complete manual way to do it so let's backtrack and review real quick we have let's go back to our first shape we have a basic rectangle we have the option of going to our effect menu warp and then we can select how we want it to warp but this will maintain our original object we also have our object menu and we can go to envelop distort and we can go to make with warp and it will do the same thing that the other option did in our warp options but this actually creates an effect that isn't a live effect basically it alters your object so it removes the original shape of the object once you have it and now you can alter these points but the original object is no longer there underneath and then our last option is object envelop distort and then we go to make with mesh and then in this we can hit the preview button and select how many rows and columns we want in order for us to manipulate the shape how we want okay so it's fairly simple three different options and you can use these to manipulate however you want uh, you just gotta be careful and make sure that you're using the correct amount of mesh points if you're gonna use make with mesh and um, that way you can manipulate your object correctly and there's not too many anchor points and you're not making it look all funky so anyway Glad you guys could join me again for another tutorial. Stay tuned. I should have a few more coming up soon. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next class. Take it easy.